Hello, thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In our previous sessions, we have covered various modules under SAP Finance and Controlling. Namely, we have covered SAP Finance General Ledger, Accounts Payable, Accounts Receivable. In this video, we will look into a new module called Cash Management. Cash management is a widely used module across most of the organizations in the world. This module is called also as treasury management for some companies and some companies call it bank and cash management. Let's cover what are we going to achieve from this module. In this presentation, we are going to cover what does a bank master data look like how does a manual bank statement work, petty cash, bank reconciliation, and we'll also look into the cash management reports. So there is an integration between MM, FI, and cash management module. How it exactly works is when a purchase order is created and a delivery is made, the accounts payable department will post the invoice and will make an outgoing payment. This outgoing payment is then triggering the cash management module, wherein two main things are taken care of. One is whether the payment is made before or after the due date, which means is it affecting the payment terms which are agreed with the vendor. And secondly, it also checks the way the payment is made for example is it made manually automatically and is there any mode of payment which is to be recorded for example if there are checks or if there are payment advices etc this affects the cash position of the company obviously because when the cash is going out for payments there is a difference which is triggered in the balance sheet of the company And finally, as you see on the right hand side also, similar to how we make outgoing payments to vendors, also the incoming payments from customers affect our cash position as the cash balance goes up when there are payments received from the customers. Over here you will see the billing to cash cycle indicates the incoming part of cash management. So there are two different parts. One is from accounts payable when the outgoing payments are made and the accounts receivable where incoming payments are recorded. This is what we have already discussed in the accounts payable module, wherein the purchase order goes received, invoice verification, invoice processing, finally leads to an invoice payment. There are many roles within the cash management modules which are very important. For example, a treasury admin has the authority to only park any parameters as well as only display any documents. Whereas there are also other roles in the company, for example, the supervisor who have the authority to not just display but also maintain any master data for banks and on the other hand they are also authorized to run any automatic payment transactions. This means that these are these senior level roles where they have the authority to make any payments and they also have the authority to display the treasury reports which help the managers within the respective teams to take appropriate decisions on a weekly or a monthly basis. Then we also have the corporate team, wherein again you will have two different differentiations between an admin role as well as a supervisor role. Similar to what we've seen in the previous slides, you will see that there are junior accountants who have the parking rights in the system, whereas the superiors which are either called senior accountants or supervisors, they have the authority to maintain any master data as well as perform any posting related roles in the system. 
So let's look into what are some of the basic concepts or process flows within cash management module. Over here, we see a chart for incoming payments where you will note that there are the customer treasury roles where any of the supporting documents from the customer are received. And these are the treasury roles which play a very important role in the organization. From this point onwards, the treasury department comes into the picture where they check any of the amounts which are received from the customer along with the invoices which are posted in the system. And if there are any open items or any mismatches, the appropriate approvals are required from the treasury department. And at the end of this process, you will see that an incoming payment is posted in the system. They may also require assistance from the accounting service department and they help out to check if there are any open items to be cleared in the system. Similar to this, we also have the outgoing payment process where we have the outgoing payment administrator, usually an analyst level position who will check or create the proposals in the system and then the, these proposals are run and a payment run is created in SAP in transaction F110. And then a supervisor or a senior accountant comes into the picture where they review these items which are created in the proposal. They check if there are any mismatches and they approve or disapprove of this. And finally, the payment program is run and if there are any checks to be created from the system, then these checks are also printed for outgoing payment. We also have the petty cash replenishment process where a petty cash custodian will monitor any petty cash balances in the system. And if there are any balances which are below the required amount on a monthly or a quarterly basis, then these are to be noted to the head of the department. The head of the department will also be responsible for posting any expense settlements or to request any petty cash payments to the Treasury Department. And the Treasury Department will finally make any outgoing payments which are required and requested from the head of the department under petty cash. We also have the chart which discusses the cash forecast. So for example, over here, you will see that the accounts payable or the GL accountant, they are in charge of creating the various documents at various stages. For example, a purchase order is created, a vendor invoice is created, an outgoing payment is created by the Treasury Department. At different stages, the liquidity forecast report is generated by a Treasury accountant. And these Two reports, liquidity forecast and cash position report, will give a true picture of what is the actual cash balance or the liquidity balance in the company. So as you see, incoming payment as well as outgoing payment both play a very important role in this department. And hence, it is not just one department which is responsible for these, but multiple departments working together at the end of the month, they create these reports. Let's look into the different transactions and business processes in SAP for cash management. The most important master data for banking is the bank key and the bank account number. So the bank key is nothing but a combination of your bank name, the location if required, and a running number. For example, you can have a bank which is present in many cities or many countries. So you will have the first few initials of the bank name combined with the location, which means you can have a city or uh, a district over there combined along with the bank name. And finally, you can have some running numbers. So even if you have multiple bank accounts 
in a same city in the same bank, then you can have running numbers which are used to identify different between the difference between the different banks. For example, let's say that you have an account in HSBC in New Delhi in India, but you also have account in another HSBC branch again in New Delhi. That means you can have two different bank keys which can be something like HSBC DEL for Delhi 001 and you can have another bank key like HSBC DEL 002. So this will differentiate the two different bank accounts that you have in two different banks. And this is an example screenshot of how a bank key looks like. The most important information under a bank key are the address of the bank and the SWIFT code which is provided to you by the bank. This is important because the bank key will be a very important entry when you make any outgoing payments or when you receive any incoming payments. So a bank country, a bank key, and within that, the address and the SWIFT code are the most important parameters for a bank master data. We will look into some of these different bank master data entries and more importantly, how a bank master data looks like in SAP in the next video. So for now, we will stop the video here and let's continue in the forthcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World Videos.